Hey. Harold, can you turn his monitors on again, please? Or turn it up just a little bit? It's not coming through. His keyboard's not coming through his monitors up here. Hey. Chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, and it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took it upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that, that at the name of, of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen, Amen everybody. Let's reach across the aisle, touch one another, for God is good. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, creator of the moon, sun, and stars, creator of lakes, the rivers, creator of mountains and valleys, and creator of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for just bringing us all together, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for that precious blood that came streaming down Calvary Mountain, dear Heavenly Father, that gives us power, dear Heavenly Father, power to we thank you for the blood that protects us from all on harms, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for that blood that's running warm through our bodies, dear Heavenly Father. We just praise you right now, dear Heavenly Father, for the precious blood. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that you have bestowed upon us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the seasons, dear Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this church called Shiloh, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for each and every one that's gathered in this place, dear Heavenly Father. You know our needs, dear Heavenly Father, and we're calling on you, dear Heavenly Father. Some, dear Heavenly Father, are grieving this week, dear Heavenly Father. Touch their hearts, dear Heavenly Father. Comfort them. 
comfort their families, dear Heavenly Father. Some, dear Heavenly Father, needs deliverance, dear Heavenly Father, from all dangerous things, dear Heavenly Father. Drugs, dear Heavenly Father. Alcohols, dear Heavenly Father. Move upon them, dear Heavenly Father. Some need a spiritual blessing, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Rain down on us, dear Heavenly Father, the Spirit, dear Heavenly Father, of your Son. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, and we just praise you right now. We thank you for our pastor, dear Heavenly Father. Bless him and our First Lady, dear Heavenly Father, as he continue to lead this branch of Zion, dear Heavenly Father, to the next level, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for what you're doing in his life, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for just being God all by yourself, King of kings and Lord of lords, dear Heavenly Father the Alpha and the Omega, dear Heavenly Father. We just praise you right now, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, for those that do not know you, that they come to accept you as their Lord and personal Savior, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you and ask that you just move in the schools, dear Heavenly Father. Protect them, dear Heavenly Father, for the gun violence, dear Heavenly Father, that's going on in this world, dear Heavenly Father. Protect them, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, Protect the men, dear Heavenly Father, of this church, dear Heavenly Father, and in the community, dear Heavenly Father, that we be the grandfathers, the fathers, the uncles, the brothers, dear Heavenly Father. Then bless the woman, dear Heavenly Father, the Proverb 31 woman, dear Heavenly Father. Move upon her, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We just give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord? The privilege of our praise the Lord in this morning. Could you just bring three people that you didn't come with, that you didn't see this?
today. Amen. Amen. If there are any visitors, first time visitors here in the house of Shiloh, would you please rest on your feet today so that we can welcome you in a Shiloh style. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Go 
into our house today. So please remain standing on your feet as the ushers are giving you a card that you would fill out and please place in the offering basket at the time of giving. But we welcome you. We welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Reverend Dr. Larry T. Walthour II and our First Lady. All of us want to just give you a shallow welcome. Please let us welcome our visitors this morning, Shiloh. Welcome to Shiloh. to the screen for the morning announcements. God bless. Good morning, and welcome to the Shiloh News Network. These are your announcements. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Psalms, 145th chapter, third verse. Show your support for our 2020 Mortgage Elimination Capital Campaign by sowing a special $20 gift above regular tithes and offerings on first Sundays. All 2020 mortgage contributions are tax deductible. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Join Pastor Walltower for our pre-Thanksgiving celebration 
on Monday, November 20th, 2017, at 7 p.m. We will have powerful praise, prayer, and testimony as we give thanks to God for all he has done in our lives. Even in trying times, there is much to thank God for. Bible study with Dr. Watower will reconvene on Monday, November 27th at 7 p.m. We will resume our study on kingdom principles. Questions and answers begin at 6.30 p.m. All are invited to attend. Enjoy the spirit of the holidays by joining our pastor, First Lady, and the Pastor's Hospitality Ministry for a day in Baltimore on Saturday, December 9th. We will tour the National Aquarium, dine at Fogo de Chao Brazilian Steakhouse, enjoy seasonal shopping, and take in the attractions of the Inner Harbor. Tickets are $65. For more information, see Sister Christine Beverly. The healthcare open enrollment period is November 1st through December 15th, 2017. Be sure to explore and sign up for annual health care options to avoid penalty. For more information, visit healthcare.gov or the Pennsylvania site at www.marketplace.healthcare.com forward slash Pennsylvania. November is men's month at Shiloh. A wide array of activities for our men have been planned for the month, and the men will lead in worship for the entire month. For more information, see the Shiloh Diaconate or pick up a schedule from the Shiloh Welcome Center. On Saturday, November 25th at 9 a.m., we will have a strong man's prayer breakfast in the fellowship hall. The guest speaker will be Minister Kendrick McIntyre of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. For more information, see our Men of Valor Ministry. The Compassion Ministry is in need of men's clothing, winter clothing, and winter blankets for the homeless. For more information, contact Sister Rochelle Orr. 3 p.m. and the Shiloh Youth Ministry will be accepting hats, gloves, and socks for Sonia's Angel Tree. We are also partnering with Toys for Tots. Boxes for donations and registration for Toys for Tots will be available Sunday in the Welcome Center. The deadline for Toys for Tots registration is December 10th, 2017. Ministry lead servants, it's time again for you to complete your budget proposal forms to your assigned deacons who will review, approve, and submit them to the Budget and Finance Office. Budget proposal forms are available in the Shiloh Welcome Center and next to the mailboxes on the lower level. All proposals should be approved and submitted today. The Audiovisual Ministry and the Shiloh Welcome Center are looking for service volunteers. Experience is not necessary, but a teachable spirit and a joyful personality are a must. Training on all equipment will be provided. Please see Mr. Mike Nixon or Deacon Bishop for additional information. The Transportation Ministry is looking for volunteers to serve as drivers. Members who are interested in serving in this wonderful ministry are asked to see Deacon Nick Day for more details. Shiloh broadcast on WRCT Channel 16 each Sunday at 7.30 a.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m., and Friday at 1.30 p.m. You can watch on Channel 16 or online at www.wrct.tv. Be sure to check local listings to support our television ministry. Spread the word and tell a friend. Shiloh is streaming on Facebook Live for our Sunday worship experience and Monday Bible study series. Live stream with us on our website or Facebook page and connect with Shiloh by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter and Instagram. Send us your likes, comments, and shout outs. Dr. Waltower's weekly sermons or sermon series packages are available for purchase in the Welcome Center. 
purchased CDs, DVDs, and Sunday School material in the Welcome Center immediately following our 10 a.m. worship experience. You can financially support our multimedia ministry by sowing a seed and indicating the amount on your envelope. For ordering and purchase information, see the bookstore staff. Thank you for tuning in to the Shiloh News Network for your morning announcements. Shiloh, let us now stand and receive our senior pastor, Dr. Larry Wartower. Come on, put those hands together. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning, Shiloh. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad. How many are still excited about the Lord? Amen. If you're really excited about the Lord, give your neighbor a high five and tell him, I'm still excited. I'm still excited. And I look back over my life and I see things over. I can truly say I'm a blessed, I'm a living testimony. To those on Facebook Live, Shiloh, let's give them a Shiloh welcome. Thank you for tuning in with us on Facebook. And please, please, please reach out to us. We'd be so glad to hear from you. You may be seated. Truly, we are so grateful today uh, for God's goodness and God's mercy in our lives. I can look at you and tell that you're blessed. Amen. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to be blessed and know that you're blessed. And so we are just so grateful. Let me say thank you so much for your prayers. As you know, Lady Michelle and I were traveling last week, and I want to thank the diaconate, thank uh, presiding, those who presided, and our men, uh, the mass men choir. I saw y'all. I saw y'all. Amen. I saw you. And uh, we're so grateful what God is doing for Men's Month. How many have been blessed by Men's Month? Amen. I've been blessed. And so we've had a, a lot of activities going on with our men, and we want to encourage our men uh, to stand strong, to stay strong, um, because weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter what you're facing in life, we serve a faithful God. Uh, the writer says, great is thy faithfulness. Uh, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I have, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord God, unto me. Can anybody be a witness that God is faithful to you? Amen. And so we are so grateful today to have with us Elder. Always a pleasure to have you in the house. Amen. Thank God for you. God bless you. And of course, Dr. Daughtry and our, our, our pulpit staff, uh, Dr. Dickerson, Dickerson, thank God for you. Uh, just a couple of acknowledgments. We want to encourage you. Um, we're looking for uh, support staff. Can the church say support? Uh, we, 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 we are rebranding our Welcome Center. When you come into those doors, uh, that is the first place of contact for Shiloh. And we want it to be a functioning welcome center that when people walk through our doors, they experience Shiloh before they experience Shiloh. Are you with me? We want them to experience the ambiance of, of Shiloh before they experience the excellence of Shiloh. And so we are looking for people. We're looking for support staff in the Northex, uh, what was called the Northex. It will be rebranded, the Welcome Center. And what that will be, we're going to have everything. We'll have um, access to books, access to special orders, novelty items, uh, mugs, uh, pins, all that stuff with Shiloh. Amen. Somebody say Shiloh. Shiloh. It will be available in the Welcome Center. We, we want people, when they come to Shiloh, they can't wait to come back. Amen. When you, when you come here, we want you to be so engaged with Shiloh that you just don't want to leave. You'd be like uh, the writer says, it was good for us to be here. I can't wait to come back. And so we need some people with the right spirit. Somebody say right spirit. Now, now we can't have mean folk in the Welcome Center. Amen. We love you, but you can't serve in that ministry. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we love all the saints, but listen, if you're not a people person, you, 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 you can't be in the Welcome Center. A amen. Amen. If you, if you don't have temperance, you can't be in the Welcome Center. Amen. If you don't have patience, look at your neighbor and say, you just can't do it now. Amen. That, that might not be your ministry. There, there is a ministry here for you, but it, it, it's not that ministry. So we, we're looking for some people uh, who won't mind uh, sacrificing uh, to serve and, and immediately following our services, um, our, our, our DVDs and our CDs will be available uh, and we want that to be up and, and running because we have a lot of people and I want to thank you 
uh, that you've been so moved by the preaching from this pulpit, whether it came from me or others, where you are investing in the CDs and DVDs. And, and, and we want to make sure that when you place your orders, your orders are available. I know it's been kind of taxing. You, you're put, putting orders in and you've had to wait. But we're, we're, we're giving a clarion call. If you got the spirit of service and you love people, somebody say love people, Amen. And you don't mind smiling when people come into the door. And even if somebody don't smile at you, if you don't mind smiling back at them, because uh, people experience Shiloh before they experience Shiloh, long before they hear the sermon, people who've come, to, and we got visitors today, I guarantee you they've already made a decision whether or not they're going to come back. They haven't heard me preach yet, but you know what they've experienced? The people of Shiloh. They've experienced the members of Shiloh. And if we are mean, no matter how magnificent the word is, they're not coming back. Now, they're smiling, so that means they're going to come back. All right. So, so we are so grateful to have you. Let's give our guests another hand. God bless you. And we're so grateful to have you here at Shiloh. Uh, and so we're asking you also, we're looking for support staff in the audiovisual uh, ministry, which is the sound booth. Um, now, no experience is necessary. They are willing to train. And so if you have men or women who are interested in serving in the audiovisual ministry, please see uh, Brother Mike in the back. Uh, as, for the non as for the Welcome Center, um, if you're interested, please make sure that you get with us, and we want to have some training. Before, before we open the Welcome Center, we want to have some training because uh, everybody that comes to church don't have the right spirit. Amen. You don't know what they're leaving at home. You don't, know what they're, you don't know where they're coming from. But no matter what spirit they're operating in, we have to operate in a spirit of excellence. We can't allow their anger, their frustrations to get us frustrated when we're out of character. So we're going to be having some training. So if you're interested, please make sure you submit your name, uh, and then we'll have staff training. And preferably at the first of the year, we will relaunch, rebrand, reopen the Shiloh Baptist Church Welcome Center for those who come to the doors of Shiloh. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Um, I want to commend and congratulate the men of Shiloh um, this month. Um, we have had a great, great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And one thing we want to try to do uh, for our men going into 2018, I want, I want our men to get this in your spirit. And I want you to repeat after me. Um, fellowship, fellowship. Relationship. relationship partnership. partnership. There can be no partnership. There can be no relationship if we don't have fellowship. I can't partner with people I don't know. And so we want our men to become partners in kingdom service. Somebody say partners. And, and that means now, um, um, now, now the good thing about York, this is, this is what I shout about. Uh, we, got, we, we got some sports, you know, there's a lot of sports around York. Now we might not have a whole lot of professional teams here, but we got the Washington um, Wizards and we got the we got the Philadelphia Eagles, and we got the Washington Redskins, and we got the Baltimore Ravens. We got everybody except Dallas Cowboys. I woke y'all up, hey man! I woke y'all up. I, 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 I know, I know this is Raven territory, hey man! But I'm standing tall for the. I'm going to need an escort after service to get out of here. But listen, 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 going into next year, um, we, we, we know men, we, we love sports. And it's, it's a blessing to be in an in a area where we have close proximity to professional sports. And one thing we want to look at next year, and I've already been looking at this, we want to be able to at least take our men to go see a professional basketball game as men, uh, a football game, uh, next year, particularly whoever's here versus the Cowboys. Amen. Uh, amen. I'm going to preach short that Sunday. Amen. Go let the church say amen. I'm going. <laughs> but listen, we, wanna, we want to uh, definitely begin to build relationships and fellowships and partnership with our men because men are crying in the dark. And I'm not talking about um, crying tears. Um, I'm talking about emotional scars. I'm talking about personal scars. And, 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 and the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Uh, and, and sometimes um, you really don't know, ladies, 
and, and this is no indictment. It's, it's just like men. A lot of times men, you know, when y'all get to certain areas in life, we just don't understand. We just, we just go with the flow. I mean, we just, we just like, okay, amen. God bless you. I'll see you in about four or five days. Amen. Uh, because I don't know who you are right now. Amen. But, but we, but the same way men, I mean, the same way women uh, need women to understand the dynamics of what women go through, men, under, men, men need men to understand the dynamics of manhood. Amen. Men need men. And, and we don't want our men feeling like I've got to go through this alone. Because I guarantee you what you're going through, somebody in this congregation is going through the same thing. You're not alone. But we don't know if we don't know. And so I want to commend 3 p.m. because they had a wonderful celebration for womanhood. Let's give God praise for the women. Amen. And so going into next year, we want to begin to cultivate uh, a men's ministry that is built upon the foundations of fellowship, relationship, and partnership. I want to know my brother. Amen. I, I felt so good uh, singing next to, you know, the burn. You know, the burn can sing. Amen. He, he got that strong voice, and I, I felt so, so, so honored just to see him. And, and the reason why I felt honored, because I remember a couple of months ago when he was in the hospital, and I didn't see him singing up here then, but to see him standing, singing today as if there was no, to see him now, you wouldn't even know he was in the hospital. You wouldn't even know what he'd been through. And so, and, so, and so when we see testimonies like that, it reinforces the fact that if God did it for the burn, he can do it for me. If God did it for Jeff, he can do it for me. If God did it for Nick, he'll do it for me. And so we want to begin to get our men uh, uh, galvanized that you're not walking alone. You're not walking in the night. Uh, we want to be there for you. We want to be there with you. And we want to be able to share together, to laugh together, to cry together, to serve together, because even Jesus wept. Y'all are not talking back to me. And I guarantee you, if I really took a poll, there's some people in here, men, that can say, you know what? So have I. Because life will put some things on you that will bring tears to your eyes. No matter how masculine you are, life will get the tears from your eyes. And so we want to begin to cultivate, somebody say it with me, fellowship. Our relationship, partnership. Now, women, we're not excluding you because, watch this, the better we are, the better you are. The better we are as men, the more, the, when we are whole, you are whole. When we are broken, you are broken. When we are bruised, you are bruised. So we want to bring healing and wellness and wholeness to our men. Because when the men are made whole, families are made whole, wives are made whole, children are made whole, communities are made whole. I wish I had a witness here. Cities are made whole, nations are made whole when men stand up and, and can testify, I need God to make me whole. How many men need God to make them whole today? Amen, I, I need God to make me whole. And so God bless you. And so uh, I want to thank you so much for your support. Um, um, next week, I'm asking all the men to join me. I'm, I'm challenging you next, next Saturday. Uh, if there's nothing on your schedule, and if there is, I'm asking you to please re readjust your schedule. Next Saturday, we're having a prayer breakfast. Somebody say prayer breakfast. Strong men's prayer breakfast right here at Shiloh. And we're asking every man to come out and be encouraged, be inspired, be, 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 be blessed by the fellowship and by the word. And we're inviting our visitors to come. Uh, and we open invitation. And guess how much it costs? Free. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. And so we're asking all of our brothers to come out uh, next Saturday. Meet us here in the lower level downstairs for our strong men's prayer breakfast. And we'll be so glad to have you on next, next week. We're going to now uh, prepare for our ministry uh, from the music ministry, and then we'll come with a word from the Lord. Let church say amen. amen. Young people downstairs, we're making transition for our youth, youth acts to go downstairs. Thank you so much. Let's give God praise for our young people. Amen. 
Amen. Youth Church is downstairs. And so uh, the staff is waiting for you. If you are not just young at heart now, amen. These are for the young people. And, and, and uh, they're waiting. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So wonderful to see our young people in church. Amen. Let's give God praise again for these young people. Amen. And we want to commend the youth staff on a great job that they're doing in pouring into the life of our young people. Amen. Can y'all please give these men a hand? It's been a pleasure. And for all of you men that are sitting out in the audience, on Wednesday at 6.30, right here, we'll have rehearsal. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we all y'all men to come on out and be a part of this wonderful ministry. We want to end this month with the bang. Put me in A-flat, sir. You right there? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, didn't that band sound wonderful? Could y'all give them a hand? Brother Corey, Brother Eric, Bishop Livings, my goodness. My, 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 my. Uh, we got something special planned for next week. Uh, and we wanted to do it this week, but we, some things. Could y'all also look at Facebook and say, hey, Brother Jeff. Hey, Brother Jeff. We miss Brother Jeff Reynolds. God bless you, Brother Jeff. We love you. We are praying for you and your family, Doc. And uh, was that Friday? Yeah. Friday. Brother Jeff Reynolds uh, buried his father. And Jeff Reynolds is not just a part of the men's ministry. He's a part of Shiloh, an yeah. intricate part of Shiloh. So we love you, Brother Jeff. We know He just texted me a few minutes ago and said he's, he's watching. And so we love you, Brother Jeff. Uh, when, we had, when, when I came in, and the brothers, he said, well, let's just take it on down to church. Let's do some old-fashioned church stuff. Is that all right? Amen. Can y'all just hop on y'all feet real quick? Just give me this beat. Mm -hmm. You want me some old-fashioned church songs? Yep. Hey, put your hands together. Everybody put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Put your, everybody put your hands this is the day, yes, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you.
was growing up, right? In the middle of this song, they would bust out with a vocabulary lesson, with a spelling lesson, because they would say, in the name of Jesus, what's in the name of We have a big door to be R-C-T-O-R-Y. In the name of J-E-S, in the name of
the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Something about that name. You can call that name in the midnight hour. And things begin to happen when you're called on the name of Jesus. Deliverance in that name. Power in the name of Jesus. Every now and then you gotta just go back to what worked. Man, those songs never lose their significance. I, I believe if we were to sing about two more verses, it was about to have a praise break in here. All, all we needed was just two more verses. Because when you call on that name, heaven began to move. When you call on that name, things begin to happen. When you call on that name, you're running in your feet. When you call on that name, you're clapping in your hands. When you call on that name, bones begin to Something about the name of Jesus. shout Jesus can you shout Jesus can you shout Jesus can you say Jesus hey I'm about to run up in here when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey, hey, yeah! Good God Almighty! Somebody gonna get it. Somebody gonna get it real soon. You don't know like I know. What the Lord has done for me. Anybody here got a testimony that God been good to you? If God been good to you, go ahead and give him a praise.
Father, we thank you for your presence in this house. The presence of the Lord is here. A sweet spirit in this place. Thank you for making this house your home. That on a regular basis, we come here and feel your presence. We don't take it lightly that you have decided to tabernacle with us in this place. This house of peace, this place of peace. Now, God, allow your word to go forth with power and proclivity. Let us decrease that we, that you may increase. Hide us behind the cross. That they don't see me, but they see all of thee. Bread of heaven, feed us till we won't no more. And we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate the presence of the Lord in this place. Thank God for... I, I don't think that pit's going to be the same. Amen. I think if you walk over there, you just might start shouting. Amen. It's... I'm, I'm, I'm almost convinced that if they went on their instruments, they'd probably be leading the church in praise right about now. You know, they get their praise on the instruments. And we celebrate the fact that they can praise God. You know, that's not to make us feel good. They're not doing that to make us feel good. They're, they're praising God with the gift that God gave them to enhance the service. And so when I see Brother, when I see Dr. Will on that organ and I I'm looking at Corey, and I'm looking at Urk. Ah, boy, they better be glad I can't play an instrument. I'll be right over there right about now. Hey, man, just, just give me a foot pedal. I just, <laughs> I just want to be where the Lord is. I'm so glad to be back home. There's nothing like being in this pulpit serving in this house. And I am just so honored. Lady Michelle and I are just so honored to be a part of such a special congregation and a special place. I preach all over this country, but I'm always glad to come back to Shiloh Baptist Church. There's nothing like preaching behind the pulpit of Shiloh Baptist Church, and so we missed you all last week, so forgive me if I'm like a horse that's been tied up because I'm, I'm glad to be back home, and so, so y'all bear with me today. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Psalm, Psalm 51. I want to thank God for the voice. Oh, you know, we call him the voice. Thank God for Brother Tony uh, giving us our announcements. I'm just going to enroll in his school of, of, of voice. Amen. He, he just got that radio. You know, if he, wasn't, if he wasn't doing what he was doing, he'd probably be a radio personality. And so we are so grateful, amen, for all of our men. Uh, the book of Psalm, Psalm 51 Psalm 51, and I want to focus on four verses in this psalm, verse 1, verse 10, verse 14, and verse 17. And this, this psalm is a psalm of David, and as we walk through this psalm and we examine and expatiate loftily from this psalm, we would discover that David's words are applicable to every man alive. Uh, he, he starts out in verse 1 by saying, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 14 says, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. In verse number 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God. 
a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. For just a few moments today, I want to talk about an O oh God moment. An O oh God moment. An O oh God moment. Psalm, thank you, ushers. Uh, Psalm 51 is no doubt one of the most personal, passionate, and powerful of all the Psalms of David. David is a king, and as king, uh, he's, he's found himself in trouble with God. In, in this particular psalm, David is not a ruling king, but he's a repentant servant. This psalm is a soulful cry for the administration of God's loving kindness and tender mercies in the midst of divine justice. And I want to submit to our brothers today that all of us, under the sound of my voice, no matter what your pedigree is, no matter what your academic status is, no matter what your financial status is, no matter what your status in life, all of us eventually will have an oh God moment. Uh, an oh God moment is, is that time that comes just before Lord have mercy and comes right after do it now. Uh, it, is, it is a moment in your life when you realize that you need the mercy of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning realizing that I need the Lord's mercy. Do I have a witness here? I, I went to bed last night realizing that I need the Lord's mercy. Because the Bible says, for it is by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. And I don't know about you, but I thank God because I understand what mercy is. Can I help the church? Uh, mercy is, is when God uh, uh, d does not give me what I do deserve. Mercy is when I do something that deserves the justice of God. And rather than God giving me what I do deserve, he gives me what I don't deserve. That's grace. Can I get a witness here? And all of us can testify today that we thank God that God gave us some stuff that we realized we really didn't deserve it. David here cries out to God because the backdrop of this particular psalm, this text is found in 2 Samuel chapter number 11 and 12 where we find that David, number one, he's out of place. Number two, commit sin with Bathsheba. Number three, murders her husband, Uriah. Number four, attempts to cover it up. And number five, David is ultimately confronted by God through Nathan the prophet. David is identified by God as a man after God's own heart. In the book of Acts, God classifies David, Dr. Dickerson, as a man after God's own heart. Yet when you look at the life of David, there is nothing that suggests about David that this man is a man after God's own heart. I wish I had a witness here. David had flaws like everybody else. David had faults like everybody else. David had frustrations like everybody else. But what I shout about is that in spite of David's false thoughts and frustrations, he still had faithful favor from God. You missed a shout moment. That God's favor is not based upon your faults and flaws. His favor on your life is based upon fellowship. And is there anybody here can testify, I thank God that I know who God is. And not only do I know who God is, God knows who I am. Somebody ought to shout over that right about there because, because when folk look at your life, they try to figure out how you got, what you got, how did you get where you are. You need to let them know you need to, go, you need to know the God that I know. You, you don't know my story. You, you, you see the glory of my life, but 
Let's turn back some chapters. You don't know when I was on skid row. You, you don't know when I had to walk the floors at night. You don't know when I had no month and money. You don't really know. And so when you see me praise God, it's because I'm having a flashback. When I think about how good he is, when I think about where he brought me from, hey, Lord, when I think about how he brought me out, when I think about how he healed my body, when I think about how he kept my, my family, I can't help but give him glory about all that he's done in my life. This, this text for men today is predicated upon a man who is living a life of misery. In 2 chapter, Samuel chapter number 11, the Bible says that it came on the days when the kings were in battle. The first thing about David, how he got in trouble, was that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. When you read 2 Samuel chapter number 11, the first verse says, in the days when the kings were in battle, meaning that David was supposed to be on the battlefield. But he decided to stay home. You don't have to leave your house for trouble to find you. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Trouble will on your door. Can I get a witness in this house? The brother's kind of quiet right about now. I understand. But, but, but David should have been on the battlefield. It came the days when the kings were in battle, that David was at the palace. The first problem about David, how he got in the situation, that David was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And watch this. We, he was at the palace, and while he was there, there was a woman on the roof. That's a sermon right there. Fiddler on the roof. The woman on the roof. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Bless his holy name. He was out there looking over the palace, Tony, and, and his eye. Her name was Bath Sheba. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> Bath Sheba. That, you can imagine what she looked like by her name. Ba Bath Sheba. Bath Sheba. Bath Sheba. And David did like every brother in this room would do. They all say, I'm guilty. Because let's not throw stones at David because every one of us have a Bathsheba. How like that one? I'm, I'm coming back to it. This woman, Brother Kevin, by the name of Bathsheba, is bathing on the roof. While David is at the palace, Jeff, looking out over the palace of how much prosperity God has enlarged the kingdom, and David is there uh, uh, evaluating the, 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 the terrain, and as he looks out over the palace, he sees a woman by the name of Bathsheba on the roof taking a bath. And his heart said, I got to have her. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was supposed to be on the battlefield, but he stayed on the playing field. You can't fight on the devil's playground. Y'all missed the shout moment there. That, you, you can't fight the fight of faith on the devil's playground. God has called us to be on the battlefield. And David 
not being on the battlefield, was on the playing field, and he commits sin against Bathsheba. The Bible says, watch this, that he was surrounded by servants and not substance. Every man in his life need men of substance that's going to hold him accountable in times of temptation. Y'all missed this. Because the men of substance was on the battlefield. And all David had was servants around him. And you never want to surround yourself with yes people. The diaconate will tell you all the time that I don't, I, I don't like yes men. I, I like for them to tell me what's on their mind because they may see something a different way that I don't see because it's not always my way. Sometimes wisdom comes through other voices. And many times we get in trouble because we don't have people in our lives that's able to hold us accountable. I got some brothers that don't call me Reverend Doctor. They call me Larry. Because to them, it's not about my title or my position. It's about me. And every man must have somebody in your life of substance that when temptation comes your way, they can hold you accountable. David fell into temptation because he had no accountability. The Abners and the Ahabs and those in his army, his, his soldiers were on the battlefield, but his servants were at home. And servants are not in a position to challenge the king. And so David commits this sin with Bathsheba because he had no accountability around him. And every man, every woman, everybody in the body of Christ, somebody say accountability. Because ladies, don't get quiet. You need some accountability in your life too. Denzel. Bless his heart. Oh, y'all getting okay. Yeah. Talk about Bathsheba. All the, all the men. It's like, move on from that, Pastor. Mention the Denzel, the ladies. Ooh. We need accountability. In our lives because if we don't have accountability we talked about this two weeks ago that the heart is wicked even though I'm saved my heart is desperately wicked and I need to know that God has not only my heart but there are people around me that got my back are y'all with me this morning David is out of place he commits sin with Bathsheba then he murders her husband she's married She's married to a man by the name of Uriah. Uriah is on the battlefield where he's supposed to be. David calls Bathsheba. Are y'all with me today? He commits uh, uh, adultery with her. She gets pregnant. It gets back to David. You have a son on the way. David now trying to figure this thing out because, because his, her husband is on the battlefield. And, and if he's on the battlefield and she comes up expecting, everybody's going to know that he's not the one. Y'all quiet. He calls Uriah from the battlefield and says, listen, listen, listen. I want, I, I want to be a blessing to you. You got to be careful because every blessing is not a blessing. He calls Uriah from the battlefield and says, listen, listen, Uriah. I want you to, to, to enjoy your wife. Go, go and enjoy your family. Take some time from the battle. And, and Uriah says, I can't do that. How can my fellow soldiers be on the battlefield and I'm at home enjoying my wife? He said, that's not manly. God wouldn't appreciate that. And the Bible says that night Uriah slept outside his house at the door. The next morning, David says, listen, Uriah didn't go inside last night. He slept outside this door. David getting sweaty now. He's like, this, I got to do something. And what he does does not reflect anything about a man of God's heart because he sends word to the front line. And, and the letter, the note says this, put Uriah on the front line. And when the enemy advances, draw back the troops 
and expose Uriah for the kill. David, in his moment of weakness, commits treacherous wickedness. And the Bible says that when they get the note, they advance, they send Uriah out, they draw back, and Uriah is killed on the battlefield. Not only has David committed adultery with another man's wife, he now murders this wife's husband. And yet God calls him a man after God's own heart. Afterwards, David attempts to cover it up. But one day, a prophet by the name of Nathan comes to David and says, David, can we have a conversation? Because God will always send you a word in your worries. God will always give you a message in your mess. God will always give you warning in your woe. And, 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 and no doubt, uh, 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 Nathan struggled with this because you can't go to the king any kind of way. Nathan was a prophet, and so he had to, he had to walk carefully. He couldn't just go tell David what he did because David could have had him killed. So David, so, so Nathan tells him a story. He says, I want to tell you a story. A man had a sheep that he raised from birth. And this, 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 this sheep was like a part of his family. He, he took care of this sheep. He raised this sheep. He fed this sheep. This sheep played with his children. And one day, his neighbor, who had a whole flock of sheep, came to his house and says, give me your one lamb because I have a, I have a stranger, a traveler that's come to my house and I, I got to prepare him a supper. And rather than taking from his own flock, he took this man's one sheep, killed the sheep, and gave it to his friend. And Nathan asked the question, says, what shall be done for this this, this, this crime, David, not knowing that it was him, rushed to judgment and said, how dare him, the travesty of justice, what kind of nonsense is this, find that man and kill him and restore to the other man his worth. And Nathan says, O king, thou art the man. Be careful how you rush to the judgment of others because sometimes you're pronouncing your own. And it is against the backdrop of this particular text found in 2 Samuel chapter number 12, verse 13. David says, I have sinned against the Lord. And once he says that, he goes into this. He says, Lord, have mercy upon me. And this is what made David a man after God's own heart. Because every time he was confronted about his sin, he had the right attitude about it. David never tried to cover up his sin. He always confronted his sin and was, and was honest enough with God to acknowledge it. That's what made David a man after God's own heart. Not that he was a perfect man, not that he was a sinful, a sinless man, but he was a man who loved God enough that when God showed him things in his life that was wrong, David was willing to get it right. I done lost the church right about now. It is against this particular backdrop, Deacon Worthy, that David prays this prayer. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender, moment, tender mercies. So for men, so men, how, how do I understand an O God moment? Men, what do you do in an O God moment? Let's look at the text. The word Bathsheba, the, the name Bathsheba means daughter of an oath. And, 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 and Bathsheba uh, represents those things that conflict with our commitment to God. Her name means, Bathsheba, means daughter of an oath. Daughter of an oath. That's what her name means. And so Bathsheba in the text represents things in our lives that conflict with our commitment to God. In other words, in the story of David, Bathsheba is not a person but a problem. 
Bathsheba is not a woman, but a weakness. Bathsheba is not a desire, but a deception. And when we began to make Bathsheba just a particular person and not personify what her significance is in the text, we think we don't have Bathsheba, but everybody in here got a Bathsheba. Got quiet again. Don't, don't, don't look at her as a voluptuous woman. Look at her as a weakness. Don't look at her as a person. Look at her as a problem. Don't look at her as a desire. Look at her as a deception. And ladies, uh, before you, before you uh, uh, look at your husbands too carefully, maybe you are somebody's Bathsheba. Because the Bathsheba is not only about David, it's about the woman herself. Whose Bathsheba are you? Whose weakness are you? Whose problem are you? When you get in their presence, who, who, who needs do you make shake? An old God moment is not about gender, it's about grace. And so, and so when we look at Bathsheba in the text, notice where she was, what she was doing. She was, she was on the roof, she was married to Uriah, and she lived next door. I'm going to help you. Because brothers, God will never allow you not to know what your Bathshebas are. Look at the text. She was on the roof bathing. She was visible. She was married to Uriah. She was valuable. She lived next door. She was viable. Your Bathshebas are always going to be visible, valuable, and viable. God will never allow you to have a Bathsheba in your life and you don't know what it is. David knew his weakness. And every man in here know what your weakness is. I, I don't care who you are. I don't care how saved you are. Everybody under the sound of my voice has a weakness. Oh, y'all want to be holy on today. Okay, Let, let's be real. How many thank God that he delivered you from, from some weaknesses? I, I'm so glad we got some, some, some honest folk in the house. Now, when you get home and your wife asks you what's your weakness, you tell her the Lord is working it out. Because <laughs> I know my wife. I'm glad we, we drove separate cars today. <laughs> We're going to have a dinner conversation. <laughs> the Lord is working it out. Praise his holy name. And, and so Bathsheba represents our problems, our weaknesses, and the things in life that deceives us. She's visible, she's valuable, she's viable. So, so as we look at our text, an oh God moment, Nick, the first thing about an oh God moment, no, number one, an oh God moment in the life of a man reveals the bruised man. When God gives us an oh God moment experience, he does it so we can understand that we're bruised. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. According to thy loving kindness. According, here it is, to the multitude of your tender mercies. Why am I asking for tender mercies? Because I don't need tough love. And a lot of us are filled with tough love, but don't understand tender mercies. Watch this, because bruises are injuries below the surface that you don't see. Bruises show up after the fact. But they show up long after the hurt has occurred. And every man in here has been bruised. That's why 
sometimes it's hard for us to worship because we're bruised. Sometimes we've been bruised in our homes, sometimes on our jobs, sometimes even in the church. And an old God moment, according to the text, it reveals the bruised man. Look at the text. He says, blot out my transgressions. He, he says, Lord, I, 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 need, I, I don't need an eraser. I don't need you to erase my transgressions. I need you to wipe out my transgressions. Watch this. Because anything that's erased can still be visible. But when God wipes out something, it's as if it was never there. And is there anybody here glad that God wiped out some stuff over your life that when people look at you now, there is no evidence that you used to be what you know you used to be? I wish I had a witness in this house. We, we look at people now, and a lot of us, we look like we've been saved all of our lives. But some of us can testify, I wasn't always wearing suits. I wasn't always wearing dresses. I didn't always have cologne. I didn't always live where I'm living. I, I, I understand what it means to, to live outside the box. But in my old God moment, God allowed me to understand that he was bruised for my iniquities. David's dilemma in this text, brothers, is that you are not the only one that have been bruised in life. David understands what it means to be bruised. This, this, this word tender mercies is the word rakam, rakam in the Hebrew, R-A-C-H-A-M, rakam. What it means is bowels of compassion. He says, according to your bowels of compassion, that, that your compassion, Dr. Liggins, is bigger than my situation. That, that no matter how much wrong I've done, David says, Lord, your compassions supersede my convictions. Bowels of compassions, meaning that when God sees us, he don't see us in light of what we did. He sees us in light of who he is. That's a shout moment right there for somebody. As a matter of fact, that's a shout moment for everybody because all of us have done something from last Sunday to this Sunday that, that if, 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 if justice would have had its way, we, would be, we wouldn't be here. But God, look beyond all that I did and all that I didn't do and all that I should have done and gave me another chance. Is there anybody here, thank God, for another chance to give them glory, to give them honor, and to give them praise? It, it reveals the bruise, man. Look at the text. He says, he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. David has blood on his hands. He says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Verse 4, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that you might be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. David acknowledged the fact that he has not only sinned against Uriah but sinned against God can I help the church look at what he says in this text he says against thee and thee only have I sinned let me help some people don't share with everybody your fall share with them your temptation Everybody can't handle your kryptonite. Because sometimes when you tell them what your kryptonite is, they'll go and get it for you. Y'all missed it. David says, against thee and thee only. There are certain things about your struggles you need to talk, you need to, talk about to God and God alone. Because everybody can't handle your kryptonite. 
Everybody can't handle your Bathshebas. And David says, Lord, in this situation, I need you, watch this, to make me over. Verse 7 says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy of gladness, and the bones which you've broken, they rejoice. Hide, not thy, hide, hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. I'm almost done. This, 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 oh God moment, uh, Tommy, it, 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 it reveals the bruised man. David uses the word sin interchangeably in this text four different ways. He calls it sin, iniquities, transgressions, and evil. Sin means to miss the mark. Uh, trans transgression is a willful decision to disobey God. Iniquity is sin that I allow to live in me. Evil is the activity of the sin based upon how God looks at what I've done. And David says, not only have I missed the mark, sin, not only have I transgressed, I made a willful decision to disobey God, not only have I committed iniquity, I've allowed sin to dwell in me, now David begins to look at his situation the way God does. And repentance comes in our lives when we see our situation the way God does. It is not until I see my sin the way God sees it that I'm willful to turn away from it. Because sin is pleasurable. It's quiet in here. I wish I had some real folk that would be real enough to admit that sin was pleasurable. Thank you, brother. Let me help you. I'm not trying to set you up. The Bible says that Moses chose rather to suffer with his people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. If the Bible says sin is pleasure, baby, it's pleasurable. Some of y'all sinned and you, man, look at here. The party didn't start until some of us came. I'm so glad we got some real folk in here. We saw Elder this morning. At 88. Now, if he could do that at 88, imagine what it was. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Bless his holy name. It's nothing wrong with admitting the fact that when I was in the world, I enjoyed the world. But watch this. I enjoyed the kingdom a whole lot more. I enjoy my kingdom citizenship a lot more than I enjoyed the world. If anybody tell you that they was in the world and they didn't enjoy it, they lying. Look at your neighbor and say, they show enough ears. Amen. They, they, they just lying. They just lying. David reveals to us, <laughs> Brother Mark, an old God moment reveals the bruised man, but number two, it reveals the besieged man. D David says in verse 10, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew, watch this, a right spirit, which means that he was besieged or influenced by a spirit that God didn't give him. Every one of us who are saved, if you are saved, it is impossible for you to be possessed by the enemy because we are sealed by the Spirit of God until the day of redemption. So when I accept Christ as my personal Savior and the Holy Spirit comes in my life, he seals me. And the devil is not strong enough to break what God seals. So I can't be possessed, but I can be influenced. And what David is saying is that, that I did this because, watch this, I allowed my heart to dictate my spirit. The reason why I was influenced by the wrong spirit is because I had an unclean heart. 
And beloved, when we allow the things of this world and the attitudes of this world and the jealousies and the envies and the hatred of this world to get in our hearts, it allows us to be influenced by the wrong spirit. And when we are influenced by the wrong spirit, we make the wrong decisions. Not because we're not saved, but because we're not being guided by the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit and we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does that mean? It simply means to be controlled by the spirit. Got quiet. And so this, this text, Dr. Liggins, it, it, it tells me about the bruised man that David says, if, if I'm going to have an oh God moment, I've got to understand what it means to be bruised. But not only this, I understand what it means to be besieged. He says, watch this, in verse 10, he talks about the right spirit. Verse 11, the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, the free spirit. He goes from right spirit to Holy Spirit to free spirit. Renew in me a right spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit and give me thy free spirit. Watch this. Two spirits came directly from God. One spirit didn't. If there's a right spirit, it means that there's also a if there's a Holy Spirit, it means that there's a oh, y'all got it today. If there's a free spirit, there's also a bondage is a spirit. And the spirit of bondage wants to keep you bound in your sin. And David says, the reason why I had this old God moment was because not so much that God wanted to expose me, he wanted to liberate me. Renew in me a right spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit, and give me thy free spirit. Watch this, because in the New Testament, no Christian ever has to pray, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit. Because God is not an Indian giver. He doesn't take back what he gives us. If you have the Holy Spirit, he's with you from the time you accepted him to the time you die. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even when we leave him, he's still with us. And so this old God moment, talking to the brothers, it reveals the bruised man. It, it reveals the besieged man. But watch this. It also reveals the burdened man. Psalm 51 verse 14 says, deliver me from blood guiltness. He's burdened by the knowledge and the constant awareness of what he did with Bathsheba and what he did to Uriah. And many of us have been forgiven by God, but we haven't forgiven ourselves. God forgave David. But David was have a, having a problem forgiving David. And many of us, under the sound of my voice, brothers, we are burdened by things in our lives that God has released us from, but we haven't released ourselves. An old God moment in your life is to help you understand you don't have to carry the burdens alone. The word deliver means to rescue. It means to free me from. He says, deliver me because you are the God of my salvation. Watch this. And when I am free, I'm able to praise God. Look at the text. After I'm delivered, then shall my, my tongue sing aloud of thy righteousness. Could it be that certain people in our congregations today can't sing and can't shout and can't praise God because they're burdened by guilt. And they feel as if because of what they did, God doesn't love them. and God doesn't care about them. This is how David felt. But watch this. If God can call a murderer 
a man after my own heart. If God can call an adulterer a man after my own heart, if God can call a, a, a manipulator a man after my own heart, how much more us? How much more he loves us in spite of our burdens? This, this word, this word, this phrase, and I'm almost done. In Psalm 51, verse 14, blood guiltness. It's, it's the word, it's the word, not Sodom, not Sodom, not Sodom. And what it means, it means to snatch away, deliver, rescue, save from the guilt of bloodshed. David, his life had been shackled by an act. But his life was changed by an attitude. When you have the right attitude toward God about your actions, God will favor you when others forget you. I don't know who I'm talking to today. The final reality in this text, not only does an oh God moment reveal the bruised man, the besieged man, um, the burdened man, but finally it reveals the broken man. Verse 17 says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. I'm coming down because I want to I wanna interject a powerful remedy for your brokenness. I'm not going to hoop today. I did that early. He said, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me. Watch this. Hyssop was a bush. It was... It was what God told them to use to put the blood over the doorposts when the spirit of death came in Egypt. God says, get a, hiss get a hyssop branch and sprinkle the blood. At the cross, they put a sponge on a hyssop stalk for Jesus to drink. God will always give you hyssop for your hurt. Because what hyssop represent is his sup. It's his supplication in my mess up. Hyssop is his supplication. Meaning that I should die but he supplicates my situation by stepping into my situation and turning it around. Are y'all with me? And to every brother in here, I don't care what your dilemma is, you have hyssop for your situation. He's willing to step into your situation. Watch this. And not only blot out, but he'll block up. He'll, he'll turn away your enemies. He'll turn away your naysayers. And while they're trying to figure out what you did wrong, he's validating what you did right. And that's what God does. He says, I'll take your sins and I won't remember them no more. His sup. I am here today because he supped for me on Calvary. The blood that was a foreshadow in Egypt became a reality on Calvary. What was a foreshadow of when I see the blood, I'll pass over you? What can wash away my sins? And because he shed his blood on Calvary, guess what? No matter what my sin is, the enemy can't bring it against me no more. And so I decree over the life of every man today, you are free from your past. You are free from your brokenness. You are free from being burdened. You are free from being besieged. You are free 
You are free today. I decree and I declare it that if God did it for David, he's already done it for you. You missed it. He had to do it for David because Jesus hadn't yet come. He's already done it for you because Jesus has already come. We're living on the other side of the cross. So I don't have to wait for it. It's already done. I just have to walk in it. Are y'all with me? I want every man to stand up today. Every man, right where you are. An old God moment. Let's celebrate these men. Look at these men. We are blessed. <laughs> Part of what, and this is why it pays to have the right uh, wife, the right woman, because part of my ability to be able to feel the need of this house when it comes to man's study and everything is my wife gives me the freedom to spend time with God and to spend time long hours developing and, and working. And I celebrate you and thank you for sharing me with this church so I can do what I'm able to do. Thank you. It's a great sacrifice. It's a great sacrifice. It's a great sacrifice. It's a great sacrifice. And I, I celebrate and I honor you. Um, and in my study this week, this, this oh God moment, I want you to look back over your life because I told you, I, I gave you, I gave you a, a clue. Oh God moment is that moment in between, it's, it's, it's a moment before Lord have mercy and, and a moment right after Lord do it now. When we are confronted, by sin, temptation, come, come, come. Um, come here. She represents temptation. <laughs> I, can, I, I can use her for temptation and get away with it. <laughs> this is my wife, but if, 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 if she's in my life as a temptation and I'm alone, I have nothing to resist. I need men in my life that can see the trouble down the road and intervene and say, no, no, you, you, we got to hold you accountable. Accountability is the key to availability. Many of us are not available to God because we have no accountability. We live any kind of way. We do any kind of thing. And we become a reproach to the kingdom. I'm praying today that every man, God will give you an accountability partner. That when trouble knocks on your door, you don't have to go answer it alone. That you got some people in your life that can partner with you and keep you accountable. That when Bathsheba shows up, you don't fall down. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and what kind of accountability do you need? You need people that's been where you are. I, I, I can't have accountability with my peers. I need some older men who's crossed some bridges. And I need some younger men that I can be accountable to in their life. Because a lot of us, all we hang out with is our peers. But you need some older men that can impart wisdom in your life. And you need some younger men that you can give them the wisdom that you're getting from the old men so that we can raise up a generation of young people who understands accountability. Yeah. Are y'all with me? And so I'm asking our men to step down and come down. I want you to come down. I want... My temptation is going back. I'm accountable. I'm accountable to these brothers. I'm accountable to every man standing at this altar. And every man needs every man standing at this altar because every man is going through something. Every man is facing something. A Bathsheba. And it might not be, it might not be a woman per se. 
um, when back in the day, you know, when I was in college, Jeff, you know, stepping back five bit of sigma. You know what my you know what my thing was? Jamie Foxx said, blame it on the alcohol. I, I, I'm being transparent. That was that was that was that was my that was that was it. Now God has delivered me from that, but it was a process. And I had to willfully understand what my weak, weakness was and give myself to God willingly. And the more I gave myself to God, the more power he gave me over my weaknesses. But he also put some people in my life that held me accountable. That when we went out, and we did go out, guess what? You driving. What that meant? Can't drink. You can go out, but you, you can't drink because we're going we gonna to make you the designated driver. And you know what they did? They made sure I didn't drink. They went to the bartender. You see that one over there? Don't serve him. Don't serve him. Pepsi, Coke, Virgin, Virgin Daiquiris. But I thank God for those kind of brothers because they held me accountable and kept me out of trouble. And every man up here, you have to have somebody in your life that can keep you accountable and who you can keep accountable. If you hang around dogs, you pick up fleas. And we don't want to bring fleas into this house. Somebody clap on that one. Yeah, we, we don't, we don't want to bring fleas in this house. I'm serious. And I'm not talking about anything sexual either. I'm talking about our fellowship with God. A lot of times we, we say those things, we think, we think physical. I'm talking about spiritual fleas. Because when your spirit is corrupt, everything about you becomes corrupt. David says, my heart was corrupt, and then I had the wrong spirit. And so as I look into these brothers' eyes, I want you to know, listen, I care about you, and I'm accountable to you. One of the first things I said, I said, I never want to bring reproach on this house. I want to do everything I can to practice what I preach. That when you see me in the streets, I'm the same Pastor Walter you see in this, in this church. Because I, I, I don't want no man at this altar holding your head down when you have to say, my pastor is Larry T. Walthire. Same thing with my wife. And so we take this seriously. But I'm speaking into your life today. Every man under the sound of my voice, I, I come against the brokenness of the enemy. I come against family assassination. I come against family attacks. I come against financial disparity in your life. I pray that God would open up windows of financial favor in your life, that every bill is met, every bill is paid, and that you have everything that you need for sustainability and survival. I pray for prosperity in your gates. I pray for peace in your windows. I pray for wholeness. Not, not just wellness. I pray for wholeness. That God will make you whole. And I pray that the shackles of the past, or whatever that past is, it has no power over you today. And I decree that those who will bring your past against you, that God will give you accountability partners to sharpen your iron. Sisters, please stand. Stretch your hand toward these brothers. Because the brothers are incomplete without the sisters. We need our wives. Amen. Amen. Bless this holy name. Every man up here needs his wife to believe in him. Needs his wife to know that even when he falls short, I got your back. Every man up here needs to know that the, that, the, that the fight that I'm fighting is not in my house. It's in the world. And so if you have a husband up here, if you have a significant other up here, I want you to stretch your hand this way and, and, and repeat after me. Lord, 
I speak words of affirmation into this king. I speak into this man of valor that he is a man of destiny. He's a man of greatness. He's a man of kingdom authority. And I decree right now in his life the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree that Adam will come alive and Lazarus will come forth. I call out the Lazarus in every man. I call out the Adam in every man. I call out the king in every man. And I decree your greatness. I decree your greatness. I decree your greatness. In every walk of life, you're great. In every aspect of life, you're great. You're great husbands. You're great fathers. You're great men. You're great brothers. You're great kingdomites. You're great leaders. You're great business owners. You're great family men. You're great community leaders. You are great church members. You are great. And I speak to your spirit today that this old God moment will never allow your life to be the same again. I come against sickness and despair over every man. I pray that no sickness can come near you. I, I decree the blood of Christ over your life. And I ask right now that the Holy Spirit will take control like never before. In Jesus' name I pray. Now let's celebrate the men and let's celebrate Shiloh. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Now, wives, come hug your husbands. Come get your husbands. Come seek out your husbands. Husbands, stay where you are. Wives, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. If you're married, come get your husband from this altar. Come get your husband. My, my, my wife can't take me. She can come hug me, though. And I am available. Come get your husband. Come get your husband. Come on. Come on. I'm available. Hallelujah. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord. To show, to show someone the way and enable me to say. My sword is empty, and I am available, and I am available. My sword, hallelujah, is empty, and I'm available, and I am available. Before we move into our ministry of giving, Reverend Dickerson is going to come. But there may be one today who wants to be a part of Shiloh. There may be one who wants to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There may be one who wants to connect with this kingdom ministry and say, I want to be a part of what's going on here as we stand. If we have those in the sanctuary, if we have those in the sound of my voice that you want to feel, that you feel that unction, you want to be a part of this church, you want to join this ministry, you want to join this assignment and be a part of the Shiloh family, this is your opportunity. The doors of the church are open. We give you this opportunity to come, to come. Jesus says, come in our brokenness. Come in our weariness. Come in our, in, in our burdens. Come um, um, in our being besieged. He says, come. Is there one? Is there one? This is not an extension of the service. This is a part of the service. Is there one? Is there one? I want yes, to be is. a part of Shiloh Baptist Church. I want to make this church my home. I want to be a part of this great ministry. I want to be a part of this great assignment. Amen. And I am available. Available. My storage is empty, God. Right now I am. I make myself available to you. My storage 
is empty and I am available Lord I'm available to you to you I will I give to you and I'll do what you say do use me Lord show someone the way and enable me to say I just want to say my soul is empty and I am available, Lord. I'm available to you. My will, God, I give it to you. And I'll do what we have here. This is Brother Kevin Edwards' sister. She, she's the one we've been praying for. We come to Bible study, he was talking about his sister in the hospital. But well, she's the one. She not only came to be a part of Shiloh, but she just gave her life to Jesus Christ. So she wants to be a part of Shiloh. Amen. Let's celebrate that. That's, that's a blessing. And so she's given her life to Christ. Uh, and so she wants to be a part of Shiloh. Now, now you know, we... We, we get kind of rowdy over here, so we, that's all right, all right, you fit right in. So let's celebrate, amen. God bless you. Welcome to Shiloh. They're going to take you in the back and get some information, and we want to get you involved with ministry. Can the church say amen? amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. There we go. We got some huggers. There, there, there you go. Bless his holy name. Welcome to Shiloh. At this time, uh, we're going to now prepare our hearts for giving. The Bible says God loves a... Let us bless God in our giving. Reverend Dickerson will come. Mm. I feel God renewing a right spirit in me, even right now. Which means that I trust God. I trust God for jobs and better jobs. I trust God for bills paid off. I trust God for money until the bills get paid off. I trust God for checks in the mail. Hallelujah. And I trust God for rebates and returns. We give God all the glory. You're in the hands of the ushers. Amen. Since thou hast walked uprightly as a lion in the dark land, since thou was placed in thine heart on the Lord's command, he set me up a nation and cast thine enemies away. He sent me up within me, so let me hear you say, we rest in the city, we rest in the field, we rest when we come and when we go. It's in poverty for see By the devil is defeated We are Everybody say Blood, 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 blood Now believe this in God only And put no confidence in man Everything that does concern you Just place it in the master's hand for the host rise up against me. Giants royal the day. Who rush in one road to harm me? But he'll please have it. We are. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. For the
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand, praise offering. I enjoy coming to church, and, and now when you got the band anointed and enjoying what they're doing, you can have church. We give God praise today for, of course, Dr. Liggins, and he is a doctor. Amen. Dr. Liggins, uh, Brother Corey, and Eric, thank you so much. I call him, uh, I was calling him Eric, and he said they call him Eric. So, Eric, that's, that's right, Eric. Thank God for you, man. Brother Corey, thank you so much. Let's give God praise for our music ministry, our men. Preparing our hearts now. Uh, we're asking our parents to please, if you have children downstairs or in the nursery, please go and I believe sign them out. We want to make sure that the kids or the children are with their parents. So as we, as we prepare to dismiss up here and you go down to the lower levels, make sure that you meet the staff and make sure that you get your children uh, safe and secure. Tomorrow we'll be having our pre-Thanksgiving service. Uh, so we will not be having Thanksgiving service. We're having Thanksgiving service tomorrow. No Bible study. We're having worship for one hour. So we want you to bring your testimony, and uh, we'll be giving a, a word on tomorrow night. So, so tell Lottie Dottie, everybody, we want to be out here tomorrow night for our pre-Thanksgiving service. Um, again, Shiloh, thank you so much for your support. We've been having a lot of deaths here. But in every situation, I want to thank you for standing up and standing tall. Good to see Sister Sonya here, amen, who lost her dad. Thank God Shiloh was there, amen. Uh, for Jeff, uh, he's not here today, but Sister Reynolds, I think, is here. Please tell him we're praying for him. And uh, Shiloh, you did godly proud. God is proud. Thank you so much for your support and your service to these families in these time of needs. At this time, Dr. Dickerson is going to come and give us our benediction, and then we will see you in the back. Let us bow our heads one more time this afternoon to the God who is peace himself. Grant you peace today and every day in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.